Marco Chiapponi was an Italian mining engineer living and working in Chile. In 1903, Chiapponi was hired to evaluate the idle El Teniente mine in the Andes Mountains. His client decided the cost to bring the mine into production was too high, so he tasked Chiapponi with selling the property. Chiapponi contacted an American acquaintance named William Braden. Braden organized the Braden Copper Company, which bought the mine and started development. Chiapponi played a major role in developing El Teniente, building a connecting road to the railroad in the Central Valley, and freighting equipment to the mine. The concentrator went online in 1906. Braden soon decided he needed a railroad to handle the mine's expanding production, and he sold the operation to finance the project. Meanwhile, mill recoveries were falling under 50%. Chiapone thought a new flotation process developed in England might raise that percentage. He suggested sending samples to London for testing. Flotation worked and Braden Copper Company became the first major mine to successfully use flotation for concentrating copper. Marco Chiapponi's career featured remarkable achievements at the world's largest copper mine, as well as his leading role in applying flotation to copper production. Theodore Hoover was the older brother of future President Herbert Hoover. Theodore was born in West Branch, Iowa in 1871. The Hoover children were orphaned in 1884 and were taken in by other family members. Theodore earned a degree in geology and mining from Stanford University in 1901 when he was 30 years old. He spent a year as an assayer and then became assistant general manager for the Standard Consolidated Mining Company at Bodie, California. While there, he discovered a way to recover gold missed by cyanide processing. This improved the company's bottom line and earned him a promotion to general manager. London, England was Hoover's next stop. In 1907, he was hired as general manager for Mineral Separation Limited, a company experimenting with the new flotation process for recovering and concentrating ores. Hoover became an expert in flotation and authored one of the first books on the subject in 1912. After leaving mineral separation in 1916, Hoover served as a consulting engineer, managing director, and president of mining companies in Asia, Australia, Europe, Africa, and the United States. In 1919, Hoover returned to Stanford University to head the Department of Mining and Metallurgy. He played a key role in forming Stanford School of Engineering and served as a school's dean from its beginning in 1925 until he retired in 1936. During his time at Stanford, Hoover authored and co-authored numerous books on mining and engineering. Theodore Hoover was keenly interested in wildlife and helped found the Cooper Ornithological Society. Robert Bogart began his life in Ohio and later moved with his family to Arizona. Bogart attended Globe High School, where he took courses in surveying and drafting. Those classes helped him get a job as assistant engineer at the Hillside Mine in 1941. Bogart took a similar position at the Baghdad Mine in 1942. Two years later, John C. Lincoln took control of Baghdad Copper and hired Ernest Dickey who converted the mine to open pit. Bogart left Baghdad for a tour with the Army and returned in 1946. Eager to improve his education, he took correspondence courses in engineering. When Ernest Dickey died unexpectedly, Bogart stepped up to help with operations and long-range mine planning. After learning how ion exchange technology could produce refined copper from ore, Bogart decided that Baghdad should test the process. He played a major role in building Baghdad's SXEW pilot plant. The pilot plant was successful, 
Bogart then led Baghdad into full commercial SXEW copper production. The plant still operates today. Robert Bogart was a valuable member of the board of directors. He became vice president and general manager of Baghdad and retired in 1981. C. Furstenau was a consummate educator and an expert on froth flotation, hydrometallurgical processing, and environmental remediation. Furstenau earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Geological Engineering at the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. He received Master's and Doctor of Science degrees in Metallurgy from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Furstenau began his teaching career at the Colorado School of Mines in 1963. After a brief stint at the University of Utah, he returned to the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. He led the Department of Metallurgical Engineering for 18 years and received many honors. In 1988, Furstenau joined the faculty of the University of Nevada, Reno, serving as Echo Bay Mines Distinguished Professor. In 2010, the university granted him its highest honor, the Newmont Endowed Professorship in Minerals Engineering. Furstenau published 125 technical papers and edited or co-edited many books, including Principles of Mineral Processing, now an industry standard. Maurice C. Furstenau received three patents. He was elected to the National Academy of Engineering in 1991 and to the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology Hall of Fame in 2006. He served as SME President in 1982 and received the SME Distinguished Member Award.